From the newly released student video of to the student absences and faculties, the situation escalates in the University of Tirana where students have been asked not to block administration officials. The President of the Republic, Ilir Mehta, has called for politics to serve for peace and its country's citizens, stressing that it is still an unfulfilled mission. The Socialists are expected to break out a new name for the post of Mayor for Elbasan, replacing Chazim Sedini. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Wednesday, the 16th of January, 2019. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Oliver and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. Today, the students at the Faculty of Economics decided to boycott lessons once again and released a video conveying the irony of the faculty being void of students and instruction where they alluded to the absurdity that more money has been spent on guards and luxury services than on fixing real problems of the faculty, such as chairs and tables. On the other hand, there are also so many students who have not joined the boycott and have demanded their lessons. At the Faculty of Law, students chose to alter the Albanian national anthem by highlighting their requirements, and many students have claimed to have received threats over this. At the Alexander Giovanni University in Duras, the barricade of students in the faculty continues. Meanwhile, Deputy Minister Bessa Shahini urged students not to block the university offices of administration. She said, this is, an import this is important, and I call upon both universities and students who are protesting in these faculties to allow administrative work and the presence of officials from the Ministry of Education to help clarify the questions you have. In cases where the administration officials do not work, we are unable to get the right information about the students' lists, including vital information on those who are to be beneficiaries of scholarships and those who will benefit from the exemptions of student fees. Not allowing us to do our job delays the process for everyone. So once again, I invite all students who are blocking the administration officials to allow them to fulfill their duties because it is important to implement the decision by the Council of Ministers, which is related to tuition fees. Meanwhile, students say they are determined to continue the protest until their demands are met. The only ID application office in Vlor is facing an unpleasant situation. Citizens say that they stay up to eight hours in a row in long lines, whereas many have stated there are cases where they fail to apply due to the burdensome process. Under these conditions, there are also frequent clashes between citizens and application workers in which police interference is required. Citizens say they need new identity documents to receive services, but apparently one office is not enough to withstand the flow of applicants. One citizen even complained, I cannot even take my pension if I do not get my passport. Youth and older people, some of whom complain about their health, are forced to stand in line for hours until they reach the office doors. Present in Vlor today was the Deputy Interior Minister Romina Kuko, who spoke about the importance of replacing documents while promising additional counters and windows to improve the process. Long lines in the application offices for identity documents exist in all the major cities of Albania. The President of the Republic, Ilir Mehta, has called for peace and civil service in politics, emphasizing that this is still an unfulfilled mission. The head of state said leaders must demonstrate vigilance towards the efforts that could affect stability by sowing feelings of hatred and by misusing the state for the benefit of gaining power. Through unity and cooperation, we overcome separation and divisions. This was the word of Pope Francis on the World Peace Day, which brought together the apostolic Nunciature of Albania and President Ilir Mehta to the activity referred to as good politics is in the service of peace. The President said that Pope Francis's message are a national obligation, underlining the importance of dialogue between the government and the opposition, the assembly, society, community, and family. Meanwhile, Archbishop George Fredo recalled the importance of politics to align closer to peace, 
while he did not leave without mentioning the hard reality in Albania. Writing and sending peace orders began in 1968 by Pope St. Paul XI and continues to this day to remind everyone of the importance of peace in our lives. Chazim Sedini appears not to be in the socialist, as the Socialist Party candidate for the fourth term in the municipality of Elbasan. SP Parliament Speaker Taulam Bala, along with General, the General Secretary, said that the Socialist Party wants to give new energy to the city of Elbasan. Taulam Bala said that the prefect has the duty to guarantee the service to the citizens. Glendon Laitya has the backed support to carry out his duties as the mayor of Elbasan in the best possible way. It will intensify the important role that the prefect plays as representative in a territory controlled by the prime minister and the government who must verify any problematic political related issues in all areas, said Bala. One of the potential candidates to replace Chazim Sedini may in fact be Glendian Latia, who since today has been named as the prefect of the district, as well as the actual mayor of Elbasan. Glendian Latia's nomination is the first step by the government to replace the team of former military prefects. Interior Minister Sander Leshai said that this move is meant to give new, a new spirit. With the arrival of Glendian Latia, the government gives a new message of support and attention to the district of Elbasan, and we hope that Latia will bring a new spirit that is representative of his age. Meanwhile, Sedini himself stressed that his administration has made all the preparations for the June 30th elections. The snow precipitation and the ice have created problems for farmers and agriculture in the north and northeastern regions of the country. Many greenhouses containing seasonal produce have collapsed from the heavy snowfall, causing great damage to agricultural crops. Jamal Hajani, a farmer from Vaudeus said the damage caused by the weather totals over 2 million lek. Through agriculture, he and his family earn a living, even though the insured income is not enough. Today, when he sees the damage that holds the receipts for the construction of greenhouses, he feels hopeless. Though Kosmachi is the most productive area of the Shkoda region, he explained that he did not receive subsidies for the agriculture. The exclusion of farmers from these established criteria is more than e absurd. As for the destruction that, we, that the snow has left behind, no one has gone to verify the cost of damages because the hope that farmers will get compensation from the state is almost zero to none. The Central Election Commission has called on political parties to pay back their fines, otherwise they will face penalties. For this reason, the members of the Central Election Commission have decided to postpone the decision on Friday to allocate annual funds for political parties for the June 30th local elections. Several parties ranging from the largest party, the Socialist Party being the largest, then the Democratic Party, and then the Socialist Movement for Integration Party, have been fined by the Central Election Commission. Meanwhile, we are the ones doling out the funds when they are the ones who owe the state budget fines from previous elections, said Dinar Biba, vice chair of the Central Election Commission. Also for the elections on June 30th, the regional election offices will be established in the 12 districts around the country, which will begin operations on March 1st and continue until the 31st of July. The facilities and work equipment needed to supply these offices will be provided by the district prefects, and the ballot boxes will be the same as those that the CEC have used in previous elections since 2009. Twenty years after its construction, the Beauville water supply will have its capacity doubled and a new transmission line will be built to provide 24-hour water access to Tirana. The workings were inspected by Mayor Arion Valiai, who guaranteed a solution for the water problem in Uzberisht and around the area of the New Ring Road during the summer months. With the doubling of its capacity and a transmission line from Beauville to Uzberisht, we will finally solve the water problem and 2019 shall be a year of success. Until the end of this year, we will work to finish the workings on capacity and the whole transmission line, making sure that this year marks the end of the crisis we have experienced with water, said Ariane Valiai. 
Meanwhile, from the new water transmission network running from Beauville to the city, the majority who will benefit will be those who reside in dwellings that were previously in the commune of Kashar, Uzberisht, Astir, and around, the, and around the area of the New Ring Road. According to Valiai, this is the largest investment in over 20 years towards the city's water supply and comes thanks to the performance by the UKT and the assistance of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And that's the news from across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening. And be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday from 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. And once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and have a great night.